Sicken and so down. Uh, strain, again. It had a dying fall. Oh, it came over my ears like the sweet sound that breathes upon a bank of violets. Steel, giving over. Uh, enough. No more. It's not so sweet now as it was before. Oh, spirit of love, how quick and fresh art thou! That notwithstanding thy capacity receiveth us the sea. Naught enters there. Of what validity and pitch soever but falls into abatement and low price, even in a minute. So full of shapes is fancy that it alone is high fantastical. Will you go hand, my lord? What? Curio? The heart. Why, so I do. The noblest that I have. Oh, when mine eyes did see Olivia first, that instant was I turned into a heart, and my desires, like fell in cruel hounds that have since pursued me. What news from Olivia? So please, my lord, I might not be admitted. But for my handmaid to return this answer, the element itself, till seven years' heat, shall not behold the face of Andrew. But like a question, she will veil walk and water once a day and champ around with eye offending Brian. All of this to season the brothers of love, which she would keep fresh and lasting as our remembrance. Oh, she that had the heart of that fine frame to pay this debt of love to a brother. How will she love when the rich golden shaft had killed the flock of all affections else that live in her? When liver, brain, and hearts these sovereign thrones are all supplied? filled her sweet perfections with one self-king. <laughs> Away, before me, to sweet beds of flowers. Love thoughts lie rich when canopied with bowers. He's in Elysium. Perhaps he's not drowned. What think you, Captain? It was perchance that you yourself were saved. Oh, my poor Sebastian. And so perchance may he be. True, madam. And to comfort you with chance, assure yourself. After our ship did split, when you and those poor numbers saved with you hung on our driving boat, I saw your brother. I saw him all the acquaintance with the waves so long as I could see. My known escape unfoldeth to my hope, the like of him. <coughs> Knowest thou this country? I, madam, well, for I was bred in more than three hours' travel from this very place. Who governs here? The noble duke, Orsino. Orsino. I've heard my father name him. He was a bachelor then. And so is now, or was so very late. For about a month ago I went from hence, and then it was fresh he murmured. As you know, what great ones do, the less will pride a lot, that he did seek the love of fair Olivia. What she? A virtuous maid, daughter of a count, that died some twelve months since. Then leaving her in protection of his son, her brother, who shortly also died, whose dear love she hath enjoyed the sight and company of men. Oh, that I serve that lady. It'd be hard to compass. She will admit no kind of suit. 
There's fair behavior in thee, Captain. I pray thee, and I'll pay thee bounteously. Conceal me what I am, and be my aid for such. Disguise as happily shall become the form of my intent. I'll serve this Duke, and speak to him in many sorts of music that will allow me very worth his service. What else may hap? To time I will give it. Only shape thou thy silence to my wit. Your mute, Elvie. When my tongue laughs, it let my eyes not see. I thank thee. Lead me on. my niece to take the death of her brother thus. I am sure the care is an enemy to life. By my trust, Jeremy, you must come in early on nights. Your cousin, my lady, takes great exception to your hours. You must confine yourself within the modest limits of order. Confine? I'll confine myself no finer than I am. These clothes are good enough to drink in, and so be these Boots, too. That coughing and drinking will undo you. I heard my lady talk of it yesterday. And of a foolish knight you called in one night here to be her wooer. Who? Uh, Sir Andrew Agachie? Aye, he. Why, he hath three thousand ducats a year. Aye, but he'll have but a year in all these ducats. He's a very fool and a pro one. Fine, I shall say so. He hath all the good gifts of nature? He hath indeed. Almost natural. He's a fool. By this hand, they are scoundrels and subtractors that say so. Who are they? <laughs> they that add more over he drunk Maggie in your company. With drinking healths to my niece. <laughs> I'll drink to her as long as there is passage in my throat and drink in a lyric. But here comes Sir Andrew and your face. How oh, now? Sir so me about sweet Sir Andrew. <laughs> Uh, bless you, Bethro. You too, sir. A cost, Sandra. A cost. What's that? My niece is chambermaid. <laughs> Goodness, what's a cost? I desire a better acquaintance. My name is Mary, sir. Ah. Goodness, what's Mary a cost? <laughs> you mistake, sir. <clears throat> uh, a cost is, um, is front her. Board her? Woo her? By my truck! I will not undertake her in this company. Is that the meaning of a cost? Yes, very well, gentlemen. Uh, pray you, sir, bring your hand to the buttery bar and let it drink. Where was, sweetheart? It's dry, sir. Why, I think so, but what's your guess? The dry desk, sir. Are you full of them? Why, oh, yeah, I have them at my fingers ends. Mary, now I let go of your hand. I'm married. All <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, oh, oh, right. Thou lackest a cup of canary. Uh, when, when did I see the uh, soap put down? Never in your life, I think. Unless you see canary put me down. <laughs> me think sometimes I have no more wit than a Christian, or an ordinary man has. But I am a great eater of beef, and I believe that does come to my wit. No question. I have fought that. I have swear. I'll ride home tomorrow, Sir Toby. Pourquoi, uh, my dear knight? What is pourquoi? Do or not do? Oh, I would. I had bestowed the times in the tongues that I had in fencing, dancing, and bow bathing. Oh, and I but follow the arts. Faith, I'll go tomorrow, Sir Toby. Your niece will not be seen. Or if she be, it's four to one, she will not me. The Count himself be a hard one, sir. She'll none of the Count. <laughs> Tut, <laughs> there's life in it, man. Ah, I'll stay a lot longer. <laughs> I am a fed off the straightest light in the world. A 
I like a mask, a rebel, sometimes altogether. Art thou good at these kickshots, knight? Ask any man in Illyria, whatsoever they be, on a degree of my betters. And I believe I have the back trick simply as strong as any man in Illyria. <laughs> Wherefore are these things hidden? Why do these gifts have a curtain before them? What dost thou mean? Is it a world to hide virtues in? I did think, by the excellent constitution of thy leg, it was formed under the star of a gallant. I, to strong, <laughs> and thus in different world than a fair colored stock. <laughs> <laughs> shall we set about somewhere else? What shall we do else? Let me uh, see the caper.
The more fool, Madonna, to mourn for your brother's soul being in heaven. Ah, take away the fool. What say you to this fool, Malolio? Doth he not men? Yes. And shall do to the pangs of death shake him. Infirmity that decays the wise that ever make the better fool. God send you, sir, a speedy infirmity for the better increase in your body. So tell me, will it be sworn that I am no fox? That you will not pass this word for two pence that you are no fool. <laughs> what say you to that, Malvolio? I marvel your ladyship takes the light of such a barren rascal. <laughs> I protest. I take these wise old men that so crow at these set kind of fools no better than the fool Sainis. Oh, you are sick of self-love, Malvolio, with taste for the distemper appetite. To be generous, guiltless, and a free disposition is to take those things for bird balls that you deem cannonballs. Madam, there is a decayed young gentleman much desires to speak with you. And the Count also knows it. I know not, madam. It's his very man. Uh, who of my people will be the delay? It's your tub, madam. Your kinsman. I'll fetch him off, I pray you. He speaks nothing but madmen. Uh, go you, my Lilio. If it be a suit from the cat, I am sick or not at home, <laughs> what you will to dismiss it. <laughs> <laughs> Why, my honor, how drunk. <clears throat> what is he at the gate, cousin? A gentleman. What gentleman? Tis a gentle man here. <laughs> <laughs> a play on these pickle herring. <clears throat> and that's soft. Good, Sir Toby. There's one at the gate. Aye, Mary, <laughs> what is he? Let him be the devil, and he will. I care not. Give me faith, they are. Well, <laughs> it's all. <laughs> <laughs> What's a drunken man like, fool? Like a drowned man, a fool, and a madman. One draught about me makes him a fool, the second mads him, and the third drowns him. Go oh, down and sit over my uncle. He's in third degree of drink. He's drowned. Go watch your man. He has been mad yet, Madonna, and the fool shall look to the madman. <laughs> Madam! Yon young fellow swears he will speak with you. I told him you were sick. <laughs> he takes with him to understand so much, and therefore comes to speak with you. I told him you were asleep. He seems to have for knowledge of that too, and therefore comes to speak with you. What's to be said to him, lady? He's fortified against any denial. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him he shall not speak with me. Has been told so. He says he'll speak with you. <laughs> what manner of man is he? A very ill manner. He'll speak with you. Will you or no? Of what personage in years is he? Not yet old enough for a man. Nor young enough for a boy. Uh, he's very well favoured and speaks very truly. Let him approach. Call in my gentleman. Gentlemen! <laughs> the lady calls.
Are you a comedian? No, my profound heart. And yet, by the very fangs of malice, I swear, I am not that I play. Are you the lady of the house? If I do not usurp myself, I am. I heard you were saucy at my gates and allowed your approach rather to wonder at you than to hear you. If you be not mad, be gone. If you have reason, be brief. Sure, you have some hideous matter to deliver when the courtesy of it is so painful. Speak your office. It alone concerns your ear. I bring no overture of war, no taxation or homage. I hold the other in my hand. My words are as full of peace as matter. Yet you began rudely. What are you? What would you? The rudeness that hath appeared in me have I learned from my entertainment. What I am and what I would are as secret as maidenhood. To your ears, divinity. To any others, <laughs> profanation. Give us the place alone. We will hear this. Now, sir, what is your text? Most sweet lady, a comfortable <laughs> duck, much may be said of it. Well, that's your text? In Borsino's bosom. In his bosom. <laughs> I have read it, it's heresy. Have you no more to say? Good madam, let me see your face. Do you have any commission from your lord to negotiate with my face? You are now out of your text, but we shall draw the curtain and show you the picture. Look you, sir, such a one I was this present. It's not well done. Tis beauty truly blent, whose red and white nature's own sweet and cunning hand laid on. Lady, you are the cruelest she alive if you would leave these graces to the grave and leave the world no copy. Oh, sir, I shall not be so hard-hearted. It shall be inventoried, and every particle and utensil labelled to my will, as item, two lips, indifferent red, item, two grey eyes with lips to them, item, one chin, one neck, and so forth. Where you said you let's praise me, I see you what you are. You are too proud. But if you were the devil, you are fair. My lord and master loves you. How does he love you? With adorations, fertile tears, with groans that thunder off the sighs of fire. Your lord does know my mind. I cannot love him. Yet I suppose him virtuous, know him noble, of great estate, learned and valiant, and in dimension in the shape of nature, a gracious person, but yet I cannot love him. He might have took his answer long ago. If I did love you in my master's flame, with such a suffering, such a deadly life, in your denial I would find no sense. I would not understand it. Why? <laughs> what would you? Make me a willow cabin at your gate and call upon my soul within the house. Right. Loyal canzons of contemned love and sing them loud even in the dead of night. Halloo your name to the reverberate hills and make the babbling gossip of the air cry out or... Olivia. <laughs> oh, you should not rest between the elements of air and earth, but you should pity me. You are too much. <laughs> what is your parentage? Above my fortunes, yet my state as well. I am a gentleman. Get you to your lord. I cannot love him. 
let him send no more. Unless, perchance, you come to me again to tell me how he takes it. <laughs> Fare you well. I thank you for your pains. Spend this. I am no feed post, lady. Keep your purse. My master, not myself, lacks recompense. Love make his heart a flint that you shall love, and let your fervor like my master's be placed in contempt. Well, well, fair cruelty. What is your parentage? Above my fortune, yet my state as well, I am a gentleman. <laughs> Will you stay no longer? No, will you not that I go with you? By your patience, no. My stars shine darkly over me. Therefore, I shall crave of you your absence that I may bear my evils alone. It were a bad recompense for your love to lay any of them on you. And yet, I do detect in you so excellent a touch of modesty that you will not extort from me what I am willing to keep in. Therefore, judge me in manners the rather to express myself. You must know of me then, Antonio. My father left behind him myself and a sister, both born in an hour. The heavens had been pleased, would be so had ended. But you so altered that, for some hour before he took me from the breach of the sea was my sister drowned. A lady, sir, and though it was said she much resembled me, was yet of many, accounted beautiful. She's drowned already, sir, in salt water. Though 
I seem to drown her memory again with more. If you will not murder me for my love, then let me be your servant. If you will not undo what you have done, let us kill him whom you have covered. Desire it not. I am bound for Count Orsino's court. Farewell. I have many enemies in Orsino's court. But come what may, I do adore thee so, that danger shall seem sport, and I will go. You might have saved my pains for taking it away yourself. She adds, moreover, that you'd be never so hardy to come again in this affairs unless it be to report your lord's taking of this. Receive it so. She took the ring at me, I'll none of it. Come, sir, you previously threw it to her. And her will is it should be so returned. <laughs> if it be worth stooping for, there it lies in your eye. If not, be this that fights it. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, mistress mine, where are you going? Oh, stay and hear your true love's coming back to sing. Oh, high and low, swift no girl, the prince is sweet. And Janice and the lovers sing, and every wise man's son doth know. Oh, excellent, good on, mate, good on. Good. What is love is not pure after, present love hath present laughter. What's to come is still unsure. In the lay the lies, no sense of sense. <laughs> what a caterwauling do you keep here? My lady had to call up the steward of the lonely on him turn you out of doors. Never trust me. My lady is a cateo, Malvolio is a fool, and three merry men be we. For the love of God. <laughs>
Now, good morning, friends. Now, good curio. But that piece of song, that old and antique song we heard last night, we thought it did relieve my passion. He's not here, your lordship, so please, that should sing it. Who was it? Fester, the jester, my lord. I'll go fetch him. He played the tune or what? Come here, the boy. Stayed and skittish in all motions else, <laughs> save in the constant image of the creature that is beloved. How did thou like the tune? It gives a very echo to the seat where love is thrown. Thou dost speak masterly. Well, I upon it. Young though thou art, thine eye hath stayed upon some favour that it loves. <laughs> I think not, boy. Years, I think. About your years, my lord. See, oh, by heaven. There's still the woman taken elder than herself. So where she to him, so stay she level in her husband's heart. For boy, however, we do praise ourselves, our fancies are more giddy and unfirm, more longing, wavering, sooner lost and worn than women's are. I can think it well, my lord. Once more, Cesario, get thee to yon same sovereign cruelty. Tell her my love, more noble than the world. Prices, not quantity of dirty lands, but tis that miracle. And queen of gems, that nature pranks her in and um, attracts my soul. But, sir, if she cannot love you. I cannot be so answered. Sooth, but you must say that some lady, as perhaps there is, had for your love as great a pang of heart as you have for Olivia. You cannot love her. If you tell her so, must she not then be answered? There is no woman, sighs, can bide the beating of so strong a passion as love doth give my heart. No woman's heart so big to hold so much. Make no compare between the love that some woman can bear me and that I owe Olivia. I, I know! What does that know? <laughs> <laughs> Too well what love women to men may owe. In faith, they are as true of heart as we. My father had a daughter, loved a man, as it might be, perhaps were I a woman, <laughs> I should your lordship. And what's her history? A blank, my lord. She never told her love. She pined in thought, smiling at grief. Was not this love indeed? We men may say more, <laughs> swear more, but indeed our shows are more than will. Still we prove much in our vows, but little in our love. But die thy sister of her love, my boy. I am all the daughters of my father's house, and all the brothers, too, and yet I know not. <laughs> Sir, shall I to this lady? I. <laughs> I. That's the theme. <laughs> Um, uh, to her in haste, <laughs> give her this jewel, um, tell her my love can give no place, buy no um, dinner.
<laughs> come thy way, Signor Fate. Nay, I'll come. If I lose a scrapple of this sport, let me be boiled to death with melancholy. Wouldst thou not be glad to have Malvolio, that rascally sheep biter, come by some notable shame? I would insult, man. You know he brought me out of favor with my lady about a bear baiting here. <laughs> to anger him, we'll have the bear again. And we will fool him black and blue. Shall we not, Sam? Oh, we do not. It is a pity of our lives. Oh, here comes the little villain. How now, my better lady? Get your feet into hiding. Melvolio's coming down this wall. This has been under the sound of practicing behaviors who will share this past hour. Observe him for the love of my <laughs> <laughs> it's not fortune. All is fortune. Maria once told me Olivia did affect me. And I have heard herself come thus near that should she fancy it should be one of my complexion. Besides, she uses me with a more exalted respect than anyone else that follows her. What should I think on it? He is an overweening rogue. Slight! I could so beat the rogue. Shh! Peace, I say. To be. Count Malvolio. There is example for it. The lady of the straw she married the yeoman of the wardrobe. Fire on him! Jezebel! Oh, peace! Oh. Now he's in the inn. Look how imagination blows him. Having been three months married to her, sitting in my state, calling my officers about me, having come from a daybed where I have left Olivia sleeping. Fire and brimstone! Oh, peace, peace! <laughs> To have the humour of states and after a demure travel of regard, telling them I know my place as I what they should do theirs. To ask for Sitovi. Bolts and shouts. Oh, peace, peace, peace. I frown the while. Perchance, why not watch or play with some rich jewel? Toby approaches, curtsies to me. Shall this fellow then extend my hand to the rock, quenching my familiar smile with an austere regard of control? And does not Toby give me a blow of it? Say, cousin Toby, my good fortunes have been cast me on your knees. Grant me this provocative of speech. What? <laughs> what? You must amend your drunkenness. Out, scab! <laughs> Besides, you waste the treasure of your time with the most foolish night. That's me, I warn you. One sad. I do, because I permitted you to call me fool. <laughs> Make him cry, oh! M O A I. 
This simulation is not just a formal. Oh, but to crush it a little, it would meant to me for every one of these letters A in my name. That's softly a follow prose. <laughs> if this fall into thy hands, in my stars I am above thee, but be not afraid of greatness. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. Thy fates open their hands, let thy blood and spirit embrace them. Be opposite with the kinsmen, surly with servants, let put thyself into the trick of singularity. She thus advises thee that sighs for thee. Remember who commended thy yellow stockings. <laughs> services with thee, the fortune is unhappy. Daylight and champagne discovers not more. If this is open, I will be proud. I will baffle Sir Tony. <laughs> I will be point device the very man. I do not now fool myself to let imagination jake me, for every reason excites to this, that my lady loves me. <laughs> <laughs> she did commend my yellow stockings of late. And in this, she manifests herself to my love, and with a kind of injunction drives me to these habits of her liking. <laughs> I thank my stars I am happy. I will be strange, stout, <laughs> in yellow stockings, even with the swiftness of putting on. Jove and my stars be praised. <laughs> Here she had a postscript. Thou cannot help but know who I am. If thou entertainest my love, let it appear in thy smiling. Thy smiling becomes thee well, therefore in my presence still smile, dear my sweet I prithee. Jove and thank you. I will smile. <laughs> I will do everything that thou will have me. <laughs> oh. oh, I could marry this wench for this device. Oh, that's so good, I too. And ask no other dowry with her than another such jest. Oh, I need her. Here comes my noble bill catcher. Wilt thou set thy foot on my neck? Why, <laughs> thou must put him in such a state that when the image of it leaves him, he will run mad. Nay, but say true. So why would one? Like aqua vitae with a midwife. If you will then see the fruits of this book, Marcus first approached before my lady. He will come to her in yellow stockings and to the colours of your horse, and he will smile upon her, which will now be so unsuitable to her disposition, being addicted to a melancholy as she is, that it cannot be turned into her notable contempt. If you will see it, follow me. <laughs> to the gate of Tartar, that most excellent devil of wit. <laughs>
There's your spectres for thee. Now, Joe, in this next commodity of hair, send thee a beard. By my trot, I'll tell thee I am almost sick for one. <laughs> Is thy lady within? Will not a pair of these have bread, sir? I understand you, sir. It is well begged. <laughs> the matter, I hope, is not great, sir, begging but a beggar. My lady is within, sir. I will construe to her when she come. <laughs> this fellow is wise enough to play the fool, and to do that well craves a kind of wit. He must observe their mood on whom he jests, the quality of persons and the time, and like the haggard check at every feather that comes before his eye. This is a practice as full of labour as a wise man's art, for folly that he wisely shows his fit, but wise men, folly more than quite take their wit. Gentlemen, safe. And you, sir. Dearest Wuskar, some monsieur. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so you are, and I am in <laughs> Will you encounter the house? My niece is desirous you should enter if your train into her. I am bound to your niece, sir. I mean, she is the list of my voyage. Will you taste your legs, sir? Set them to motion. <laughs> I will answer you with gate and entrance, but we are prevented. Most excellent, accomplished lady, the heavens reign over us on you. That youth's a rare courtier. Reigns the whole disc. <laughs> well. My matter hath no voice but to your own most pregnant and outshaped ear. <laughs> <laughs> Let the garden door be shut and leave me to my lyric. <laughs> Sorry, I have you be. Would it be better, madam, than I am? I wish it might 
But now I am a fool. Oh, Cesario, by the roses of the spring, by maidhood, honor, truth, and everything, I love thee so that mocker all our pride. No way to oh. my passion hide. <laughs> Do not extol thy reason from this close, but that I will, thou therefore hast no cause, but rather reason thus with reason fetter. Love soul is good, but given unto better. By innocence I swear, and by my youth, I have one heart, one bosom, and one truth. And that no woman has, nor never none shall mistress be of it, save I alone. And so, gentlemen, madam, the more will I my master's tears to you to Come again! <laughs> thou perhaps mayst move this heart, which now goes to like its love. Ha 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 ha! 
further trouble you. Since you take pleasure from your pains, I will no further chide you. I could not stay behind you. My desire, more sharp than filed steel, did spur me forth. And not a love to see you, but jealousy what might befall your travels, being skillless in these parts. My willing love, the rather by these arguments of fear, set me forth in your pursuit. I can Antonio! I can no other answer make but thanks. But word by word, the precaution is firm. I should find better dealings. Come, what to do? Shall we go to the wedding prison this town? Uh, tomorrow, sir. Uh, best first go see your lodging. Would you pardon me? I do not love an angel walk these streets. <laughs> Once in the sea fight against the county stallies to get some work. Of such note and deeds that were I taken here, it would scarce be answered. Do not walk too open. It doth not fit me. Hold, sir. Here's my purse. In the south suburbs at the elephant is best to lodge. There shall you have me. Why are your purse? Happily your eye shall light upon some toy you have desired to purchase. And your store, I think, is not for idle markets, sir. I'll be your purse bearer and meet you an hour hence. To the elephant. that I may appear stubborn to him, for she incites me to that in the letter. And when she went away just now, let this fellow be looked to. Fellow, not Malvolio, nor after my degree, but fellow. Why, everything adheres together, that no dram of a scruple, no scruple of a scruple, no obstacle, no incredulous or unsafe circumstance. What can be said? Nothing that can be can come between me and the full prospect of my hope. Where is he? In the name of sanctity, I'll speak to him. Here he is, here he is. How is it with you, sir? How is it with you, ma'am? Go off. <laughs> 
I discard you. <laughs> Leave me to enjoy my private. Go off. Lo, how hollow the fiend speaks within him. Did not I tell you? To Toby, my lady prays you to have a care of him. <laughs> Does she so? Go to, go to. Peace, peace. We must deal gently with him. Let me alone. <laughs> How do you, Malvolio? How is it with you? What man? Defy the devil. Consider, he's an enemy to mankind. Do you know what you say? And you speak ill of the devil how he takes it at heart. Pray God you be not the witch. Pretty, hold thy peace. This is not the way. Do you not see you move him? Oh, let me alone. Get him to say his prayers, Mr. Tobin. Get him to pray! <laughs> My prayers, Minx. No, I warn you. You will not hear of this. Oh, go hang yourselves all! <laughs> <coughs> you are idle, shallow things. I am not of your elements. <laughs> you shall know more hereafter. Most hideous opinion of his rage, 
skill, fury, and impetuosity. This will so fright them both that they will kill one another by the look like cockatrices. <laughs> Here he comes with your niece. Give them away till you take leave, and presently after. I'll meditate a while upon some horrid message for a challenge. I have set too much to a hard stone. Laid mine on the two unchary outs. <coughs> There's something in me that reproves my fault, but such a headstrong, potent fault it is that it but mocks reproof. With the same hatred, the dual passion bears goes on my master's grief. Here. Wear this jewel. Tis my picture. <laughs> <laughs> Refuse it not, it hath no tongue to vex you. And I beseech you, come again tomorrow. What shall you ask of me that I'll deny, that honour may saved upon us can give? Nothing but this, your true love for my master. Oh, how can I give him that which I have already given to you? I will acquit you. Well, come again tomorrow. <laughs> Fare thee well. Being like thee may bear my soul to hell. <laughs> God save thee, gentlemen. And you, sir. That defence thou hast, but take you to it. Of what nature the wrongs are thou hast done him, I know not. But thy interceptor, full of despite, bloody as the hunter, attends thee. <laughs> you mistake, sir. I'm sure no man hath any quarrel with me. You will find it otherwise. I assure you. Therefore, if you hold your life at any price, betake you to your God. For your opposite hath in him what youth, skill, strength, and wrath can furnish man with all. I pray you, sir, what is he? He is night. Souls and bodies. Hath he divorced the grief. And his incensement at this moment is so implacable that satisfaction can be none but by pangs of death. <laughs> I am no fighter. I have heard of some kind of men that put quarrels purposely on others to taste their valour. Belike, this is a man of that quirk. So, no. His incensement derives itself out of a very competent injury. Therefore, get you on, give him his desire, or forswear to where I am about you. This is as uncivil as strange. I beseech you, do me this courteous office, as to know the knight what my offence to him is. It is something of my negligence, nothing of my purpose. I will do so. Signor Fabian, stay you by this gentleman till my return. Pray you, sir, do you know this matter? I know the knight is incensed against you, even to a mortal arbitrament, but of the circumstance more I know not. I beseech you, what manner of man is he? He is, indeed, the most skillful, bloody, and fatal opposite you could have found in any part of Illyria. Will you walk towards him? I will make your peace with him if I can. I shall be much bound to you for it. Why, man, he's a very devil. I have not seen such a garage. I had a pass with him, scabbard, greatly and all. And he gave me the stuck in with such a mortal motion that it was inevitable. Ay, he will not now be pacified. Fabian can scarce hold him yonder. I call him. And I've already been funny with so bad in it, fence. I'll see him dead. Yeah, I've challenged him. I'll make the motion. Stand here. Make a good show on it. This shall end without the perdition of souls. I have persuaded him the youth is a devil. He is as conceited of him, and Panza looks pale as if a bear were his heels. <laughs> there is no remedy. <laughs> <laughs> he will, for oath's sake, have one bout with you. Marry, 
He hath better the thought upon his quarrel, therefore draw. For the supporters of his vow, he protests he will not hurt you. Pray God defend me. A little thing would make me tell them how much I lack of a man. <laughs> Come, Sir Andrew. There is no remedy. The gentleman will, for honour's sake, have one bout with you, but he has promised me, as he is a gentleman, he will not hurt you. Come on. <laughs> Shoot! Oh, pray God, he gives us up. Are you sure you? It is against my will. Put up your swords. <laughs> this young man has done offence, so take the fault on me. If you offend him, then I for him defy you. You, sir? Why, uh, what are you? Once, sir, before his love, there is yet do more than you have heard him brag to you, he will. Nay, if you be an undertaker, I am for you. Oh, good, sir, Toby, hold. Here come the officers. I will be with you and not. This is the man. Do my office. Antonio, I arrest thee at the suit of Count Orsino. You do mistake me, sir. But there is the remedy I shall answer it. What we do now, my necessity makes me to ask you for my purse. You stand amazed, but be of comfort. Come, sir, away! I must entreat of you some of that money. What money, sir? For the fair <coughs> kindness you showed me here, I'll lend you something. My having is not much. I'll make division of my present with you. Hold! Oh, there's half my coffer. Will you deny me now? <laughs> Do not tempt my misery, lest I make you so unsound a man as to operate you with those kindnesses that I have shown you. I know of none. None will I give by voice I feature. Oh, heavens themselves. Come, sir, I pray you go. Let me speak a little. This young man you see here, I snatched one half out of jaws of death, relieved him with such sanctity of love. But what such was? The time goes by. Away! But oh, how violent I will bruise this God! Thou hast, Sebastian, done good features shame. In nature there is no blemish but the mind. None can be called deformed, but the unkind. The man grows mad! Come, come, sir! Ha, ha, ha. 
And I say, there never was a man so abused. I know more that than you. Oh, fare thee well. Remain thou still in darkness. Tobias! Tobias! Oh! <laughs> To him in thine own voice, and bring me word how thou findest him. I would be well rid of this knavery. If he may be conveniently delivered, I would he well, for I am now so far in offence with my niece that I cannot pursue with any safety this sport to the upshot. Come, by and by, to my chamber. Hey Robin, jolly Robin, tell me how thy lady does. Ooh. She loves another man. Who calls her? Oh, good fool! I said that I would serve well of thy hand. Help me to an ink and candle, pen and paper. As I am a gentleman, I shall live to be thankful to thee for it. Master Malvolio? <coughs> I, good fool. Alas, sir, how fell you beside your five wits? Fool, there never was a man so notoriously abused. I am as well in my wits, fool, as thou art. But as well, then you are mad indeed if you be no better in your wits than a fool. <laughs> By this hand I am. <laughs> now, good fool, some light, ink, and paper, and convey what I will set down to my lady. It shall advantage thee more than ever the bearing of letter did. I will help you to it, but tell me true, are you not mad indeed? Oh, do you counterfeit? Believe me, I am not. I tell thee true. Nay, I'll never believe a madman until I see his brains. I will fetch you light and paper and ink. Adieu, good man devil. Now, 
my foes tell me plainly I'm an ass, so that by my foes, sir, I profit in the knowledge of myself, and by my friends I am abused. So that conclusions to be as kisses, if your four negatives make you two affirmatives, why then the better for my foes and the worse for my friends? Why, this is excellent! <laughs> by my short, sir, no. <laughs> Though it please you to be one of my friends. Well, that should not be the worst for me. Let's go. Cool. But that it would be double dealing, sir, I would you could uh, make it another? Uh, you can fool no more money out of me at this throw. If you will let your lady know I am here to speak with her and bring her along with you, I may await my bounty first. <laughs> Mary, let your bounty take a nap. I will await it alone. Here comes the man, sir, that did rest you. Why, a face of his I do remember well. All blame vessel was he captain of. With which such scathful grapple did he make with the most noble bosom of our fleet? That very envy and tongue of loss cried fame and honour on him. What's the matter? Oh, Sir, no. This is that Antonio. He had a streak, desperate, of shame and state. In pride of grapple did we apprehend him. He did me kindness, sir, drew on my side. But in conclusion put strange speech upon me. I know not what it was but distraction. Notable pine, thou salt water thief. What foolish boldness brought thee to their mercies? Whom thou in terms so bloody and so dear hast made thine enemies. Also no, noble sir. Be pleased to shake off these names you give me. Antonio never yet was thief nor pirate. <laughs> Though on base and grounds enough, count it all as enemy. A witchcraft threw me hither. That most ungrateful boy there by your side, from the rude seas and rage that form him after I redeem, a brick past hope he was. His life I gave him, and did thereto add my love. For his sake did I expose myself to the dangers of this adverse town, <laughs> drew to defend him when he was beset, whereupon his false cunning taught him to face me out of his acquaintance. How can this be? When came he to this town? Today, my lord, and for three months prior, both day and night, did we can company. Here comes the countess. Now heaven walks on earth. For thee, fellow, fellow, thou wert some madness. Three months this youth attended upon me. More of that anon, take him aside. Alas, it is the basis of my fear that makes me strangle my papa. 
pass between this youth and me. A contact of eternal bond of love, confirmed by the recent journal of your hands, attested by the holy cross of lips, strengthened by the entertainment of your rings, and all the ceremony of this compact, sealed in my function by my testimony. <laughs> oh, thou dissembling coward! <laughs> Bend thee well, <laughs> and take her. Direct thy feet where thou and I henceforth may never meet. My lord, I do protest, oh, do not swear. Hold little faith, the love is too much fear. For the love of God, a surgeon! Send her presently to Sudoku. What's happened? He broke my head across. I gave Sir Toby a blood cockscomb too. For the love of God, your help. Who has done this, Sir Andrew? The Count's gentleman, one Cesario. He called him a coward, but he's a very devil incarnate. My gentleman, Cesario. <laughs> oh, all types things. Here he is. You broke my head for nothing. And that, that I did. I was sent on by Master Toby. Why do you speak to me? I never hurt you. You drew your sword upon me without cause, but I bespoke you fair and hurt you not. <laughs> <laughs> if a bloody cock's called me a hurt, you would hurt me. Seems true. 
I shall have shared in his most happy way. Oi. <laughs> <laughs> that was said to me a thousand times. Thou never shouldst love woman like to me. And all those sayings will I overswear. And those swearing to keep. Give me thy hand. Let me see thee in thy woman's wings. The captain that did bring me first on shore hath my maid's garments. She, upon some action, is now in durance at Malvolio's suit. I have gentlemen and follow of my ladies. He shall enlarge her. And yet, alas, now I remember me, they say poor gentleman is much distract. A most extracting frenzy of mine own, for my remembrance clearly banished his. Oh, how does he, Sarah? Uh, truly, madam. He holds the ends of a feather, staves, and as well as a man in his case may do. Has he a written letter to you? Well, open and read it. Look then to be well edified when the fool delivers the madman. <clears throat> By the Lord, madam, you wrong me, and the world shall know it. For you have put me into darkness and given your drunken cousin rule over me, and yet have I the benefit of my senses as well as your ladyship. I have your own letter that induced me to the semblance I put on. I leave my duty a little unthought of and speak out of my injury. The madly used Malvolio. What? Did he write this? I, madam. This same is not much of a distraction. <laughs> Bring him hither, Fabian. So please you, my lord. These things further thought on to think of me as well, uh, sister, as a wife. Madam, I am most apt to embrace your offer. Your master quits you, and for your service, Duncan, since you called me master for so long, here's my hand. From this time be your master's mistress. <laughs> A sister, you are she. <laughs> <laughs> Ha 
I will be revenged on the whole Thank you. 